Oh, yeah, yeah, Jacob here. Today we're looking at the Brinks Company in the commercial services and supplies industry. 4.5 billion market gap on 6.7 billion enterprise value. Quite a bit in net debt there. They provide secure transportation, cash management, and security-related services in North America. Okay, so that's the type of vehicle that transports ATMs and all that stuff. If you've seen them on the freeway or in your city and such. Found in 1859. Damn. Darn. Shucks. It's been around for quite some time here. And growth is mid-single digit, mid to low single digits. So nothing sexy, but I mean, 2, 3, 4% growth a year is still something. And the margins are up on both gross margin side from high teens to mid to low 20s and operating margin from low single digit to upper single digit all positive stuff there paying a dividend an increase the last three years turn invested capital pretty low okay so that makes sense why they're paying a dividend if you don't have the capability of reinvesting back into yourself to get high rates of return it does make sense to give money back to shareholders through a dividend or here it purchases. <clears throat> Balance sheet shows 1.1 billion cash on hand, 269 million short term debt, 3.2 billion long term debt. Heavy increase from 10 years ago, almost 10 times. It likely was due to acquisition, let's see, or multiple acquisitions. Okay, very likely. We made quite a bit of net acquisitions from 2017 to 2022. And again, this other line is their capital expenditures. So for the last five years, we are seeing that those were likely pretty solid investments. We don't know whether they were, you know, good prices to pay or not. We'd have to do a deeper dive on that. But we are seeing a heavy increase in cash from operations and capital expenditures have not grown nearly as quick. And so the production of free cash flow is quite a bit higher. And so much so that in the most recent year, you're looking at about $600 million of free cash flow, which is very great in relation to market cap and even about 10 times the enterprise value. But if you look at three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, and you take an average of the last five years, it's like it's really closer to about 300, 400 million of free cash flow. And that dividend only pays out 40 million. So that dividend's paying out maybe 15% of their free cash flow, so nothing huge. And sherry purchases are a good amount. But there's going to get to a point where they're going to want to focus on debt reduction, especially when they have three, $400 million, let's say $300 million, five-year average free cash flow, with 10 times that for debt. So in the most recent year, I think we said, was that 600 or 800 Okay, 600 million, I mean, even 600 million in relation to 3.2 billion is five years. So even if they were to peak out their most recent or of the last 10 years, the greatest amount of free cash flow they had, five years of that would barely pay off their long term debt. So they're really going to have to focus a little bit more on debt reduction, which we have not seen net debt reduction since 2016. So again, we have to balance out what we want the company to do with what they've done historically and use that in our projection of free cash flow for the future. And so let's start making some assumptions on the revenue growth side. I think I'm pretty comfortable sticking pretty close to inflation, the 2%. And then more recently I've done their enterprise value uh, or their terminal P and price free cash flow based more on enterprise value than market cap. And so I think I'd feel comfortable with the 10 P here. And then for margins, they haven't been very great. I do like that free cash flow is quite a bit higher. Maybe let's say if, uh, earnings get closer to free cash flow. Can we do something like five and eight? Pretty big range again because earnings have been so much lower in their free cash flow figure. The free cash flow is the true cash in, cash out of the business whereas earnings can be manipulated to pay less taxes and everything. Um, not illegally, but there's, there's legal ways of doing it, but uh, it's just understanding the tax code where, again, free cash flow is just tax, uh, cash in, cash out. 
And so share change, let's get to that assumption. 1% would be about 45 million, 90 million, 135, 166. So 3% would be about 50% of their five year average free cash flow. And um, most recent year, that's, that's a bit smaller, maybe 30%. Dividend pays out just 40 million. They can definitely increase that. What have they done historically? Not too much. Okay. Because it's very small, we can increase that a little bit above the revenue growth to where at the end of seven years, maybe it's 20% of their free cash flow. And so this is leaving about 40% of their free cash flow to debt reduction acquisitions that make sense. I think I'm pretty comfortable with that. Um, maybe here, let's just do with inflation. So this, I'm just trying to leave a little bit more money left over to reduce debt because 10 times their five year free cash flow. Again, it's five times their most recent year, which is their largest free cash flow figure of the last 10 years, but uh, 10 times their five year free cash flow. So if they're able to consistently get this 10% free cash flow margin, then it's likely less of a concern to reduce that debt. But if they do somehow go back to their uh, mean revert, back to their average margins, then they will require being to pay off some of that debt or else their debt ratios are going to get a bit concerning both to the uh, person issuing the debt as well as you as the shareholder being more confident that they'll be able to pay it down. So. Pretty comfortable with these assumptions. We're saying these are all 63% to get to the price we're looking for. Um, you know, I don't think it's the sexiest company, but again, everything has a price for it. And so what I paid three times their five year average free cash flow or 50 times of the business growing 8%. I mean, very likely this one. Um, but again, everything is just the price you pay for in here. I think at this price point, it's a little bit too much for me. So hopefully you enjoy the video. Have a great Thank you.